What's going on, broskies? My name's Shivoki. Welcome back once again to another Smite God Guide. Now, last time we took a look at Osiris, and you guys absolutely loved that one, so we're going back for the highly requested Guardian, Geb. Now, to be honest, when I first started recording this, I did not see why anyone would actually want a guide for Geb, because he seemed very easy, but mastering Geb is a lot more difficult than it actually seems. He's a very amazing Guardian that played correctly can help dominate the enemy team in so many ways, it's just insane but overall he's so fun to play i definitely recommend you guys trying him out now today we will go over my typical conquest build other builds i have for him his abilities and his passive things that counter him and also things that he counters and much much more now guys be sure to like comment and subscribe please subscribe guys we're almost at 20k i cannot wait to get there you guys are amazing and also let me know in the comments down below what god needs a guide next now first let's take a look at gibbs passive and abilities. Now to me, Geb has one of the most simplest kits in the entire world, especially when it comes to his passive, Hard as Rock. Now Geb literally only takes 25% damage from crits, rather than the normal 100% damage from crits. So this basically means that crits don't do fucking shit to him. If you're a hunter and you think you can beat his ass with crits, you are a big old fool. It doesn't touch him, it doesn't hurt him, and this is a very good thing for him in dual lane, because if a hunter tries to build crits later in the game, they're basically wasting their time. So that's a passive, guys. Very simple. Any questions, let me know in the comments down below, but I don't think there should be one because it's literally dirt simple. Get it? Because he's rock and there's dirt. It's... Okay, we're done. Now, every single time I use Geb's number one called Rollout, I say Autobots roll out. No, I'm definitely kidding. That's fucking lame. I don't do that. <laughs> Or do I? Geb turns into a mass of rolling earth, damaging and slowing enemies he encounters, stopping at the first god he hits. He increases speed as he travels. His damage also is scaled from 75% to maximum over 3 seconds as well. Now once he's at top speed, Geb becomes CC immune and he also knocks back enemy gods. Now when I say knock back, I mean knock the fuck back. These gods go flying so badly sometimes it actually makes it hard for you to kill these gods because they're so far away. So be careful with that one, that's a big problem with his ability is sometimes you can push them away or closer to safety and it's kind of defeats the purpose of playing smite in general because you're supposed to kill the enemy not help it out here buddy run run to safety now the damage scales from 100 to 400 plus 75 percent of your magical power the slow is at 30 percent at all times but the slow duration starts at one second and goes to two seconds in max duration the cost guys starts at 50 max out at 70 mana and the cooldown is 14 and max out at 10 seconds not too bad it's a very nice ability i actually love for lane clear it actually hits pretty hard so in certain team fights you can say all right guys attack 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 you can start, start building the roll up pretty soon start rolling onto a wall and you kind of can do a quick little turn and knock an enemy towards your allies and then basically you can say boy boys you're dead senor you're murdered and it literally murders everyone this ability is amazing i love it it's good for lane clear it's just fun in general helps you get away from everything it's you'll cc immune guys and it is very important to try to hit them of course when you're at max power but if you can't you can't so just really try your best to hit them at max power but it's a great ability and of course after i go over all, all the abilities i'll go over which ones to level first and why to do so but there we go that's number one called rollout so i definitely love geb's number two it's simple it's cool and it does the job and it's called shockwave. Geb creates a shockwave which ripples out from him in a cone, causing damage and knocking up all enemies. It's amazing. It's just really, really good. The damage decreases the further the enemy is away from Geb down to 50% of maximum range. It still hits them, but of course it reduces 50% damage. So the damage starts at 90 and maxes out at 370 plus 50% of your magical power. The radius is 45 with a cost of 60, but also max out at 80 with a cooldown of 15 seconds at all times. This is a great ability. Now his cooldowns are pretty high, keep in mind that. So cooldown reduction is really, really good on him. But I love this ability. It's a fantastic ability. It hits hard. And the best part about it, it knocks them up. Someone's, you know, running away from three enemies. Knock them all up. They're slowed down for a simple second. You know what I mean? It's very nice. You hit them with a freaking one. Guess what? They're actually slowed. So it's a really cool combo to kind of knock them up and go into the one and slow the whole team. Because you can do that, you know, correctly. If done correctly, of course. But this is a very, very good ability. It's really good for lane clear. It's also really good for poking. But like, once again, my favorite thing about it, it actually knocks people up. So with an Awelix paired with you, it's just literally devastating. It hits hard. It's a pretty far range. And it's not hard to hit. Very, very easy to hit. And I actually love the ability. So guys, this is a good one. This is a very, very nice one. Now, a good Geb to me is defined by how they use their three. And if you disagree, you are insane because it is called Stone Shield and it is the shit. Now, Geb targets himself or an ally to put a shield around. The shield blocks all damage and lasts until the time expires or it takes enough damage to be destroyed. The shield also cleanses any CC when applied. Did you hear that, my friends? It cleanses any CC when applied. So this is a fantastic 
a way to get away, to engage into a team fight, or just save an ally in general. It's a fucking amazing ability. One of my main things I love doing it with is actually popping on myself and going to a team fight and allowing someone to CC me down and waste their CC on me. When I pop the stone shield on me, of course, all the CC goes away. So it's a very, very good thing. You can be CC'd in multiple ways. You can have a silence on you and a stun on you and pop the shield on you, and you are good to go. Now, of course, the cooldown, guys, is the 18 second cooldown, so you do want some cooldown reduction. To keep that in mind. The shield health starts at 50 and maxes out at 250 plus 20 health per level. So do the math. It's a pretty nice amount of health as well. Now, the shield duration starts at 3 seconds and max out at five seconds so this is a very good ability to level now some people play get where they level it first some people play get where they level it last or second it doesn't matter i'll go over my personal preference and you guys will see what i think is the best thing to do but that's just my you know my personal preference it doesn't it's not final you do not have to do it but i love this ability it's an amazing ability keep in mind it's so so important to save with the right time of course, if your teammate goes into the tower, they're getting CC or something, pop it on them, save their ass. If you're if you're running away and you really need the ability to go into your one so your one can go CC immune, pop it on you, then roll into your one. So it's very simple, guys. Good ability, and I absolutely love it. And lastly, one of my favorite blink ults in the entire game, hands down, is Geb's. It's called Cataclysm. Geb pulls apart the earth, dealing magical damage to all enemy gods based on a percent of their current health and stunning them. Now, guys, the damage starts at 15 and maxes out at 35% of the current target health. Now, keep that in mind. This basically means this ultimate can never kill anybody. I don't care what you've heard. I don't care what you read. I don't care what thing you read on Reddit. It's not true. This ultimate cannot kill anybody. It will never kill anybody because it's done on percentages, guys. 15 to 35% of the target health. So it's very, very awesome ultimate. It hits fucking hard, especially late game. I love it, but the best part about it is the stun, guys. At first part, it starts at 1.6 seconds, and at the very end, it's 2 seconds, guys. A very, very good stun. It's an instant cast. It's amazing. The radius is 30, guys. A huge radius, and the cooldown is 90 seconds, of course. So it's a very fantastic ultimate. I love blinking in and doing this. If I have a whole team kind of in the middle of a team fight, I'll roll in there. I'll pop a cleanse one of my boys and knock them up, and I'll best boom, cataclysm, and everyone's stunned and fucked up, and they lost a lot of health, and they're all screwed, and Geb's like, I'm just chilling here with my huge amount of health and I never can die because I'm amazing. I love Geb, guys. Geb's amazing. This ultimate's amazing. And this kit is just devastating. So that was the passive and abilities. Now this is how I level Geb's abilities when I play him. Now of course I'm playing him in a support role. I'll play him like this where I level the one first. I level the shield second. I level the rollout last. And I level the ultimate whenever I can. So pause it right here. Screenshot it. Use this if you want to play Geb as a guardian and support role only. I fucking love this one. It's perfect. It works really well for me. Of course, if you want a little bit of extra damage, you can roll, you know, level some rollout a little bit in there, but of course, I don't recommend it. Now, if you're going to damage roll, I definitely recommend leveling rollout more often than the three, of course, because you want to have the extra damage. It hits hard. It actually hits pretty fucking hard, and I love it, but guys, if you want to play him a support role, this is how you do it right here. Pause it, screenshot it, use it. It is the bee's knees. Now, one reason I really love Smite is because you can play a god in so many different ways. You can build them in different ways, start them in different ways, and personally, I think every single way is fun in its own different kind of style. Now, Geb, when I play him, I usually, 95% of the time, play him as a complete support. So this is how I start him, guys. Watch his gift, level 1 shoes, 4 multi pots, and 4 mana pots every single time. I never stray from it. I love it. Of course, if I'm going the damage route, which is very rare for me, I won't start this way. I'll start more damagey, of course, which is typical, but this is how I start every single time, guys. Like I said a few times already, guys, when I play Geb, I do not really enjoy playing him as a damage role. I definitely enjoy playing him as support. I know some people say, oh man, do that one-shot build. It's so fun. It's so cool. But that's not my thing. I personally love being a tanky beast to help my team get completely destructive, just crazy kill streaks and kick ass and win a game really fast. And that's how I definitely love playing Geb, guys. The build right here is what I use when I play Conquest every single time. I love it. It's amazing. Cooldown boots, soft variety, hot ward amulet. Gauntlet of Thebes, Bulk of Hope, and a, whatever robe I choose to use. Personally, it's either Mantle of Discord or Spirit Robes. I just personally love them. They're amazing. Uh, but this build right here, guys, really helps me every single time. It allows me to be really aggressive and have good auras for my team. It can help my whole team out as well with a shield and extra health. And that little bit of cooldown allows my abilities to be up a lot more sooner than usual. And personally, it just works out for me every single time. So, guys, this is a build I recommend. Pause it here. Use it here. I also have situational items, of course, which we'll cover next, but this right here is my Conquest support build for Geb. Now, here are my situational items. I love these ones. These are my go-to. Whenever I have a situation where I really need to grab a new item to help my team out in whatever situation it is, these are the ones I go to. Material Staff, Mystical Mail, Megardi Mail, Hydenini Lion, Pestilence, and any blade that'll help me with slows or attack speed issues. 
choose, and much, much more, guys. I love these items. Pestilence is really good against the healers. Good, good amount of health and magical protection as well. The Guardian Mail stops anyone from fucking with me. In, in general, basically. Mystical Mail is just annoying and helps you really do a little bit extra damage in team fights when you're kind of you know, doing your best to be a really supporty tank. Etherial Staff is fantastic for the extra health and the extra damage. I love it. This is great. And of course, the Hiding Me Lane is kind of like that one thing you build if a hunter is being very aggressive, very powerful, and he's doing a lot of damage onto you, or an Osiris, or a Erlong Chen with good basic attacks. You really want to have this to stop them from hurting you whatsoever. It makes you very tanky, very scary, and no one can touch you. These are the ones I use, guys. I love them. They're my personal go-to situational items, and I definitely recommend them. Now, just because I love you guys, I wanted to show you my personal damage build for Geb, but I also don't want to hear any bullshit in the comments down below, like, where's your Polynomicon? Where is this? Where is that? This is how I personally enjoy playing Geb if I'm not playing him as support. This is my video, my personal build. I know there's probably are some better things you can do. You can definitely build some situational items like, you know, Mystical Mail, or Gem of Isolation, some Penetration, some Polynomicon, many things like that, but personally, I like this build right here. It allows me to hit pretty hard, still be tanky, and also hit really hard my base attack which I really do enjoy when I play Gab in a damage role. So guys, right here, pause if you want to be a douche and and, and do this in the game because it definitely is a very annoying and strong, powerful build. Now, lastly, I want to go over some tips and tricks, combo guide, and what he counters, and basically what counters him as well. When I play Gab, I love playing him with a hunter that can take advantage of my CC chain or even help me continue that CC chain even more. Now, personally, when I play in duo lane, I love playing with Cupid, Ho Yi, and is it not me the most? Of course, there are definitely other hunters that help a lot as well, like Medusa, but personally, those three are my favorite. I have such an easy time knocking them up into a Cupid Heart Bomb or a Ho Yi Stun or an Izanami Ultimate, and it makes Geb so much fun to play. And it definitely is a great combo in general to de devastate the uh, duo lane in general. So you definitely want to do your best to roll out behind the enemy gods and push them into your allies, knock them up, and then with your Shockwave, and then basically you want to body block the fuck out of them like a madman until their entire team is begging for their teammate back. And you're like, you know what? I'll just ult you instead. Ult the whole team, push the whole tower, get a team kill. That's Geb 101. Geb is just a fantastic and really body blocking. He's a fantastic body blocker, like one of the best in the whole game. You can actually just save an ally's life by standing in the way of abilities and basic attacks. He's so good at it. But there are things that counter him as well. A silenced Geb is a useless Geb. So anyone that can lock him down, push him away, or silence him, or basically keep him useless, it makes it very, very hard to be a good Geb, and it can basically counter him very, very hard. All right, broski, that's it for today's God Guide. I definitely had a really good time making the Gap God Guide. I didn't think I would, but it turned out to be one of the most fun God Guides I've ever had to make ever. He's a very fun guardian, and I definitely recommend you guys giving him a chance, trying him out. He's so, so worth it. Now, guys, thanks for watching the video. Leave a like, show support, comment down below, any questions, comments, and concerns. Also, what God needs to guide next? And also, please let me know any questions, comments, concerns you have for Geb in general. Let me hear your personal build, build for Geb. Also, any tips and tricks for Geb. I would really appreciate hearing those in the comments down below. Also, guys, subscribe for more content from your Broski Shiboki. We're almost out 20k subscribers. We're so close. I can taste it already. You know, 20k special is going to be a smite montage, and hopefully, I'll actually incorporate some of you guys' plays as well in there. So we'll stay tuned for that one. I might make an announcement about that pretty soon. I'm very excited about making my 20k special smite montage. I've always wanted to make a montage, and I'm excited to really put a lot of work into it. Hopefully, I can get it out as fast as possible, and hopefully, I get it out in general. Now, guys, thanks for watching the video. Have a good one, and as always, my friends, do some more fuckers. Deuces up.